Below the blind flying panel sits a connecting panel that joins the port and starboard instrument panels. The connecting panel is the foundation for the lower anti-vibration mountings for the blind flying panel. The front of the panel carries the switches for the cockpit lighting and heating. There are three lamps fitted to the whirlwind, two mounted below the reflector site to illuminate the instrument panels and one above the compass. The removable upper cannon breech access panel forms the lowest section of the instrument panels. Attached over the starboard cannon breech, a dovetail bracket holds the gun camera film footage indicator, an original and very rare piece of equipment. To the port of the breech cover, mounted on an angled extension to the port instrument panel, can be seen the remote contactor instrument. Part of the identify friend or foe equipment, it was in essence a time switch that controlled the pipsqueak signal sent from the aircraft to allied airspace radar defences that the aircraft was a friendly and not a hostile. Again a very rare and expensive original piece. Situated to the port behind the pilot's head armour, the undercarriage warning horn is attached to the pilot's crash pylon. Another rare original piece the Whirlwind Fighter Project acquired for the build of P7056. The most recognisable instrument in the Whirlwind is the reflector gun sight. The early production Whirlwinds were fitted with the round screen version P7056 being a late production model is fitted with the rectangular reflection screen version. The Whirlwind Fighter Project was unable to source an original gun sight and plug. The later models being very rare and very expensive if one can be found at all. With the May deadline for moving the cockpit section to the Battle of Britain Museum fast approaching the decision was taken to manufacture a full replica. We had looked at a number of 3D printed versions but did not consider their quality approach the standards we were looking for. The gun sight consists of three main sections. The reflector head casting that houses the upper focus lens and bezel. The reflector screen is held by the angled arms of the casting. The main body houses the sight graticule and the adjuster cams. The cams are operated by two rotating rings. The first sets the base length for a particular aircraft wingspan such as an ME109 or a Heinkel 111 and so on. The second ring sets the range scale. While sophisticated for its day the Mark II sight was soon superseded by the gyro stabilised Ace Maker gun sight. The lower section consists of the quick release bulb holder. Depressing the buttons on the release bar closes the spring loaded legs allowing the holder to be removed so the pilot can change a blown bulb. Three spare filaments being held in a rack on the starboard cockpit wall. A similar situation arose with the pilot's Sutton harness. While similar to the Spitfire and Hurricane harnesses, the Whirlwind had several differences. While utilising the same early triangular quick release bottle, the mounting points were unique to the Whirlwind. The main anchor points attached to the forward sidewalls of the pilot's seat and not to the cockpit structure. The spring-loaded harness release was positioned on the lower aft of the pilot's bulkhead in front of the flare tubes. This feature required a different configuration of the shoulder and lower attachment straps. Again, no original harness exists. 
as true an example possible was produced that at least matches all the known information available. Late model whirlwinds post P6983 have a different radio system from the earlier models. The TR1133A required that the radio mast be moved from the top of the coupe canopy to a position at the starboard front of the windscreen. The mast itself was held in place by a complex bracket arrangement bolted to the inside of the armoured bulkhead. This in turn required a redesign and much more complex front combing for the electrical compartment and starboard instrument compartment through which the mast passes. The Type 1133A radio was only in production for a very limited period and is now virtually impossible to obtain. The Whirlwind Fighter project was most fortunate to possess the correct sheathed mast with the correct socket connections, a very rare piece indeed. To finish the as authentic cockpit reproduction as we can possibly produce, the map case was manufactured to hold original World War II operational maps held by the Battle of Britain Museum and then fitted to the inner edge of the starboard diaphragm bulkhead. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through the Whirlwind Fighter Project's GoFundMe page. Also please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the Whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum at Hawkinge. Many thanks.